Good afternoon, folks. Uh, my name is Mark Conroy. Um, I'm a lead front end developer with Anertech, which is Ireland's largest Drupal company. And my laptop has just broken. So the live demo will be screenshots, and the interactive stuff will be, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thankfully, I stored this in Dropbox, so uh, I've got I've got it someone else's computer. Um, so apologies for that, and feel free to go to the other presentation if if that's not good enough. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to uh, to talk about using Drupal uh, in a I suppose in a headless manner, really, so we can build apps uh, by bridging Drupal with the Ionic framework. <coughs> Specifically, the app we're going to look at is building an app for a megalomaniac. And I, I know everyone here doesn't speak English as a first language, so basically we're going to build an app for Donald Trump. <laughs> so what we're going to look at then is a, a brief background to the reason of why I decided to build an app for a megalomaniac. Um, what we can do with Drupal to build a RESTful API from it. Uh, what is Ionic framework itself, in case people haven't heard of it? Has everyone heard of it, yeah? Okay, one person. Two people, three. And two colleagues of mine. <laughs> uh, then connecting the dots. How, how, how do we bridge between Ionic and, and Drupal? And then some Q&A, and please go easy on me. Uh, especially because my laptop's just broken. So some background. We had an election in Ireland um, about three months ago, and I decided to run in the election. Uh, I didn't really decide to run in the election. I fakely decided to run in the election. Uh, just to annoy some local politicians that were running and, and steal some thunder. So I had my poster campaign ready. I was going to sort shit out. Um, <clears throat> I got myself a Facebook page. My wife tried to stop me, so I ran her over in a tank. Uh, I had my hashtags to Galway Beast. Uh, my constituency is Galway East. And Mark for King. I wanted to be the King of Ireland. And. Uh, I had a hashtag for Twitter going on as well. I got one retweet um, from a person I'm kind of scared of, actually. <laughs> and I got an endorsement from a megalomaniac. So Donald Trump said there was only one credible candidate in Galway East for the general election 16 campaign in Ireland. That's Mark Conroy. He got 15 retweets and four favorites. Um, I won't tell you how I got that tweet, actually. So. Everything was going well. I had the campaign, I had the posters, I had the hashtags, I had the Facebook page. Uh, I just thought, you know, I need an app. I need something that will send push notifications to the tens of people that will follow me. And uh, if I don't have an app, I'm not going to get elected. So I said about building an app. And during the process of building an app, I didn't have time to run an election campaign, but I learned a bit about how to build apps. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so many benefits. So, uh, in very basic terms of to say what is Drupal, I, I'm just going to say blah, 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 because I think if, if you're here, you've probably got an idea of what Drupal is. It's, you know, it manages content for us, and it does a great job of that, so we'll, we'll skip over that. We look at uh, Drupal as a RESTful API instead. If you were, and I had a nice live demo to do on this, and it was going to be very simple and cool. Uh, if you were to build a RESTful API in Drupal 7, you need about five modules. You need, I don't know what is Views Data Source and JSON something else and RESTful services and a few things like that. Uh, and you patch them together and you get a nice uh, JSON feed. In Drupal 8, you turn on the serialization module and you turn on the RESTful web services module. And then you create a view or whatever you need to do to, to uh, get your get your RESTful data. Uh, and it's as simple as you turn on those two modules. There's also a basic authentication module that you probably should turn on as well, but just for this, we'll, we'll pass over that. Uh, you turn on the two of them, you create a view, and instead of creating a view of type page or view of type block, you create a view of type uh, RESTful export. And that will give you, oh, I have a screenshot of it. There you go. No, that's what you do. You give the view a name, give the view a description, and at the bottom, put in a path for your RESTful export, so slash new, slash JSON, or whatever you want. Um, and that's it. That's, that's all you need to do to build the RESTful API in Drupal 8. It, it, it is that simple. Um, with RESTful data, then, we can do lots of things. So we can, we can consume this in any way we want. We, we, we get ourselves a JSON feed or it outputs uh, XML as well. Uh, we create a headless Drupal site. So we had a 
great discussion yesterday or presentation yesterday from Preston who I hope isn't here because he knows so much <laughs> I'm afraid he might ask a question uh, you can you can use it as a canonical source of information so you you might have a main website and you might have five or six different subsites and this can be the canonical source of information and you can use angular or whatever framework you want to uh, pull this data into it you can use it as a content staging site I have no idea why I put that in there <laughs> Uh, the next, then you can you can you can look at Drupal then as differentiating your front end and your back end, and make a brilliant front end experience for your front end uh, site visitors, and make a brilliant back end experience for the, the content editors, and everyone can be happy. Or you could pull the data in and build an app, and that's what we're going to look at today. So, what is Ionic Framework? It's it's a hybrid web app development kit. It's built on Cordova, Apache's open source uh, app development engine. Um, it, it lets you build hybrid apps, so rather than building an iOS app and rather than building a, um, an Android app, you can build one app by writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and that will compile it into a package for iOS and a package for Android. Um, it doesn't build Windows phones or Windows phone apps. It only does Android and uh, iOS at the moment, so unfortunately, you can only conquer 99.6% of the market. Um, let's see next, it comes with loads of stuff, let's say, built into it, loads of uh, custom directives, loads of custom controllers and services, and lots of, for example, lots of CSS classes. Uh, very much like say, the way Twitter Bootstrap has, has all the classes you want and you just inject what you, what you need where, where you want it. Uh, I had a lovely screen to show you here of all the different headers, header positive, header negative, status messages and things like that, uh, and how they work, but that's not going to happen now because... <laughs> My laptop's broken. Um, it comes with support for SAS, so you, you run a command such as Ionic, I don't know, Ionic SAS or something like that, and it automatically builds your SAS library stuff for you, puts everything into place for you, and uh, runs a live reload. So anytime you change a SAS file or a JavaScript file or an index uh, HTML, or any HTML file, your site reloads for you as well. So if you want to create a basic app, oh, you install uh, Ionic. Um, you run a simple command, ionic start, and then whatever the app name is, <coughs> and then whatever style of app you want. And you have three styles, you've got blank tabs and side menu. Uh, showing two of them here, the one on the left is the tabs one, so you can see at the bottom there's a little pulsy kind of thing, and uh, there's a chat widget and things like that. That's what you get out of the box if you use uh, ionic start my project tabs. If you use Ionic Start, my project, side menu, you get the side menu. So the, the stuff there on the right-hand side that has reggae, chill, dubstep, that's the default settings that, that come with uh, the side menu one. And then you can see the menu, uh, the burger menu icon. And when you click that, then your side menu fl flies in, flies out. So what you see on the right-hand side of the right-hand side screen is the index HTML homepage. And what you see on the left-hand side of the right-hand screen uh, is the, the side menu. To add a new menu item then, there's four things you need to do. Number one, you open your uh, www folder and inside that there's a JS folder and inside that there's an app.js uh, file. That's gonna, con that's gonna control the states for your app. Um, <clears throat> copy one of the states, so, so you'll, you'll get one for whatever it is, news or, or wherever. Copy that and change change the details, so you, you'll, you'll change the state to, um, if it's gonna be an about me page to about, you're gonna change the URL to about, and you're gonna change the template uh, from, uh, well, from no template, I guess, to indexed or uh, about that HTML. Um, at a menu entry, then there's a template in there called menu.html, and that just literally lists out the menu items. So you, you can copy one of those, paste it in itself, and then change the, the name from um, what if we had their dubstep or something to about me. And then you create a controller for your state, uh, and this, the, the, that's, the, that's the JavaScript that's going to actually do whatever it does that you want on, on this page. So it, it could be pulling in the um, the latest news feed or one single note when you click on the latest news or the weather forecast or from forecast.io or something like that. Um, so there's the, the uh, AppJS states. So you, you got playlists and we just copy. I'm glad I took screenshots of this actually with the laptop broken. So you just cop copy one, one of those, paste it underneath it and then change it to whatever you need to change it to. So app.about URL will be slash about and the menu content then will use the about.html template and the controller will be called about control. So, 
the content that you're going to have that you would have seen if I could give the live presentation would have been the, up, the homepage updating with the content being static. So I just type in this is my homepage or wh whatever it is. And that's not really good enough for us because if you do that and you send your app to the App Store and you get accepted after about three weeks of, of waiting for, for, for Apple to, to make the decisions and then you realize that you spelled news N-E-S-W instead of N-E-W-S. Uh, and you want to change that one spelling mistake, you've got to submit it back to the App Store again and wait three weeks to make sure that the app is okay to go through, to, to, to go through the whole process a second time. So really we need dynamic content. Um, we need we need a content coming from Drupal so that the, the menu title will be some sort of a I don't know paragraph bundle or something that will be app menu and each menu item will will, will pull itself in uh, with link fields and things that's so all of all of the content all, all you'd want to submit really to the app store is that here you go guys this is the this is the shell this is the skeleton and everything else comes in then via via Drupal uh, so we'd connect this to our Drupal service uh, that we saw us creating earlier on. So any website content then is automatically updated on the app, such as if it's a new news post or just an edit to, to a menu item. Uh, if you want to create a single page, you use a controller that comes with Angular. Uh, Ionic is built on Angular as its front end framework. So there's a HTTP uh, uh, controller or service um, available with Angular. So in my case, I, I create one called personal controller and that's going to have my, my data for um, uh, with my name, with my address, with my, my social media accounts, and uh, I think that's on the front page of, of the, the app for a megalomaniac. You can see my name is Mark Conroy, my address is here. Please donate to my uh, campaign. Uh, then we, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll set up this, we'll, we'll send a GET request using JSON. It's very, very simple. You just uh, .get, put in the URL of the, of the JSON feed, and that will that will bring back the data for you and leave it available as what's called expressions. Expressions are like what you see in Twig with the, the double handlebars, and then you put your variable inside it. So you you'll have in this particular case, it's a personal controller. So I'll have uh, I, I call it probably person or something like that. So then I've got person that name, person that phone number, person that address, and that will all get printed into uh, expressions. So here's a sample of the of the actual code that you would use to, to create something like this. So we've got that controller uh, called personal controller and it's using two functions, a scope and the HTTP function. And it's as simple as you can see there, get uh, the, I was very clever and saved all this offline so I could show the, <laughs> show the live demo. Go to the folder called sample content, get the uh, file called personal hyphen info.json and uh, then create um, a promise, I think it is, uh, called scope that personal item. So each personal item then will, will, will be printable via an expression. And if that doesn't work, go to the error log and give me the reason it didn't work and it gives good information back of, of where you've probably just missed a semicolon or a dot or something like that somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> so in the case of, of, of my personal app then, it was Mark Conroy TD. TD stands for Chuck the Dollar uh, in Irish. It means the, uh, the Houses of Parliament. So it's Mark Conroy MP, let's say, if you're in the United Kingdom. Um, so that gets pulled in via the, the JSON feed for personal item that we saw. Uh, oh, no arrows on this. The scope that personal item equals data dot node zero. So the first node that, that it finds inside the personal item JSON feed. So personal item dot node that title is Mark Conroy. Uh, personal item dot node that main image source gives me the image source, and and you can see that that's in an ng hyphen source um, class. If you use SRC for source in images, it won't work in Angular because uh, it, the image will try to load, it, it, the, the HTML will, will realize it's an image and try to load the image uh, before the Angular section of it has run. Uh, so you, you'll end up just with a, with a blank square where the image should be. So you need to use ng source to say that, get the Angular source of the image from, from this destination. And then the, the other fields are in personal item .node short bio and personal item .node constituency office then prints the body field and the, uh, the my made up office address. So that, that creates a, a, a standalone uh, page for us that's using dynamic content that's served via Drupal and that's, that's built into our app and we can update if, so if you change office or something like that you can change your, your office address very easily. Then to create a listing page it's pretty much the same as the above except you're going to need to use another Angular function called ng-repeat. ng-repeat is, is, is a, a for loop that you'd say ng-repeat uh, node in nodes or wh whatever and then it'll, it'll uh, print out each of, of them for you. And following that then you add a ng-click and ng-click function means that if this item on the page is clicked, whether it's a link or whether it's an image or whether it's a title or whatever it is, if that's clicked, something happens. So in, in our case, we'd be saying, um, 
that if it's clicked, use local storage and open the in-app browser and show me the show me the page that, that I'm looking at. So again, you can see it's it's a fairly simple uh, piece of JavaScript. Um, we, we we saw the top part already. We're, we're going to get the sample content slash news.json here instead of personal info. Um, we're going to then uh, just go browse uh, if something gets clicked on and use it, this underscore system means use the systems uh, in app browser so it, it'll it'll open the page inside the inside the app for you so it doesn't it doesn't open up in whatever your default browser is on your on your phone so everything gets gets nicely contained inside it and then again if there's an error will you show me what the error is and tell me and print it out to the to the log um, the HTML then so the, the, the news listing page will will have um, it's got a directive called ion list and that's a built-in directive from Ionic that says this is a list. So instead of using UL and LI, we use ion list uh, for UL and then ion item instead of LI. Uh, and then we're going to repeat node in nodes. So we, we, we see back here on this page that we, we have uh, scope.nodes equals data.nodes. So, so whatever data that is, is coming from the JSON, the, the first item in, uh, in, in the array was, was called nodes. Uh, so data dot nodes. Um, so we're going to repeat the node in nodes. And ng if is an if statement in in Angular that if it's less than three, or sorry, uh, on, only only print uh, less than three, and we give it a class of node. The reason for that was that at the top of, of the app, I've got the first three news articles printing with the title and an image and uh, a, a, a link to, to open up in in full view mode. And then there's a similar call to this on the next. Uh, the next section of, of this template and it has uh, for greater than, than three for great, greater than two sorry and that just prints the title with it, uh, that's linkable so just a kind of very a small bit uh, so we can see here then that whoa oh, I don't think we're going to break two laptops <laughs> uh, ignore the blue writing in the middle of that screen but we so we got a news and updates uh, page and you can see then you got ion item is the ng repeat node and nodes so that's the that's the container, let's say, with the title and the image. And then node.node.title is the node title pulled from the JSON feed. And node.node.mainImage.source is the image ng source to, uh, to pull this in. So again, that's, that's, that's all you need to know, really, to, to, build HTML, to build listing pages. And once you've got yourself static pages or, or standalone pages and listing pages, you're, you're pretty close to having 90% uh, you know, of the kind of features that people would want from apps that that, that you're building with Drupal websites, it's you know you're, you're you're building your news pages and other other lists. If you need more data in your app, um, this was going to be very good actually. I, I had set up a, an account with Forecast.io, so we'll pull in the weather forecast for us and update that live at all times. That so if you need more data, you're going to have to create uh, based on what you've seen a second ago, or if it's external data coming from someone like Forecast.io or Weather.com or something like that, you need to set up an account with them, authenticate with them, then set up a, a service. And you'll use that, that that service will give you a promise back to say that this stuff is available for use in this controller, and then use that controller to say, okay, print the the news headlines from BBC or wherever it is. Um, to build a native app, then, oh, that's the <laughs> that's the screen here that I said ignore the blue parts. Um, to build the apps, what you what you, you need to run a, a command ionic. Yeah, the screen's blank. <laughs> uh, Ionic build iOS, and that will go build an iOS app for you, except it, it will actually give you just an Xcode project file. You've got to then open up an Xcode and, and do the, 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 the compiling there. So if you don't have a Mac computer, you can't use Ionic to build Apple apps because you need Xcode for it, uh, unless there's a service you can upload it on the internet or something like that. Uh, and then you run Ionic build um, Android, and it will go build the Android app for you as well. And that'll be a grand standalone app, and you can you can submit that to the Google Play Store straight off with, without any extra uh, processing. Uh, then you can. What was the last thing? Ah, I can't remember it. Build. Oh yes, emu emu emulate. So once you, you you've built the, the the Android app and the the iOS app, <laughs> you can then emulate them. So if you if you type in Ionic emulate iOS, and you you, you can then decide iOS iPad nine or six or whatever version of iPad you want or I iPhone six or five or whatever uh, and it will open up your iOS simulator and show you exactly how the app is going to look and how it's going to play inside uh, an iOS device and then what's very 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 clever is you can run Ionic upload I think it is and that will upload your app to the Ionic server 
and you can download an app onto your actual phone then that's uh, called the Ionic, um, ooh, Ionic Serve is it or Ionic View and then all the apps that you've stored on the Ionic server then will be visible on your on your personal phone so if I if I was to click on sorry for the size of the screen but you click on the Ionic View app here and uh, you can see all the details so I got two apps stored in that server click on the touching base app that's my own one and view app so this emulates what the what the the, the app's going to look like then when it's on your on your phone and you have a little side menu see I put loads of effort into this <laughs> so that's it you 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 ionic start app name app type uh write html write javascript write css ionic build whichever platform you want it for and then ionic uh emulate to see that that it, that it works and uh there you go, you got yourself dynamic data, you got a Drupal RESTful API, and you've got uh, a hybrid app that works on iOS or Android. Any questions? I like this. I uh, know, Alan. <laughs> why, why were you using it over PhoneGap? Um, it was built on phone, PhoneGap, and because they were doing so much stuff extra to it, they just decided, let's rather than fork and PhoneGap, let's just do our own thing. Uh, I don't really know why, why you'd use it over PhoneGap because I haven't used PhoneGap, but it seems to have great traction and it's the, it's the cool thing at the moment M over PhoneGap. But why you'd use it, I don't know. I, I can't compare it. Any, I don't know, well-known apps you use for it? Or, sorry, you use it or you know, what, who's using it if you don't There is, and you've caught me off guard. There, there, uh, if you go to Ionic, they, they do have a list of Here's some apps that, that were built built with it. Um, I don't know, maybe BBC.com or one of those kind of things, but it, it's been used by fairly decent app developers. But I can't answer your question. What's the next question I can't answer for you? <laughs> yeah. Did you win the election? Uh, I got the moral victory. <laughs> <laughs> no, one of my neighbors was running in it in a, for a political party I don't like, and uh, she got elected. So <laughs> I got no victory. <laughs> yep. Are there any tools uh, that I need uh, when I develop uh, an application for iOS, for example, and uh, uh, what tools uh, do I need to display uh, my app in my iPhone? Uh, I'm guessing that the Ionic View app that I showed a second ago is available for iPhone as well. Uh, if you want to see a, a real working version of it, but given that you have to have a MacBook or uh, an Apple computer to to run Xcode, so to, to develop the, the iOS version of it, that's going to have the, the simulator built into it. So you, you you'll get a real world working example of it from the simulator. But if you want other people to v to view, you can you, you can do it like what you saw with my app there that you can upload it to the Ionic server, and then your wife or your your your, your children or whatever can or your friend or. <laughs> your QA team <laughs> might be better. <laughs> can uh, they, they can they can see the app then without having to engage with your computer? Anthony, will it help or hinder uh, getting your app into the app store? I've got a feeling Apple would prefer you to write it in Swift or in Objective C. I don't think it'll be any problem getting the app into the Play Store, but I, 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 I I'd say the, uh, uh, the official line is no, no problem. But I'd say it might be slightly easier to get a native app put into the App Store. Yep. How about uh, notifications? Can you do the same to have push notifications to like yeah, just phones itself? Yes. Yeah, there's there's a couple of services. Uh, Apple have an insistence that if you want push notifications on a phone, you must use the Apple, whatever push notification system is, is called. Uh, Google has a system for it too, and Ionic have now started their own system that you can you can do your push notifications directly from from Ionic, um, and that's kind of new. There's. But does it mean you have to push to Ionic and Ionic pushes to the phone? Or uh, I'm not sure which way that goes. I'm kind of guessing. I haven't looked into push notifications. Huge amount. I'm Presume you, you log into your account on, on Ionic, and you click send, and that, that, that goes to whatever app subscribers you have. It's a, it's a paid add-on for, for, for it. But it's cheap enough, I mean, you can get maybe a million or something for 100 euros a month. 
but in terms of say interacting with with the phone anything that your phone can do in terms of you know uh, geolocation or uh, f- uh, d- the phone camera or any other apps that you have so facebook and things like that it, can, it interacts with all those the same as any any native app would how does it work with updates like self-updating the app and, and would you say like you have to wait three weeks to get the, the next version after that how it works yeah yeah and that, that's that's why I, I like the idea of <laughs> of, of Building the app as small as possible, that updates won't be needed, and, and building as much as possible, kind of offline, that it gets it gets stored on your own server, and you can you can run it from there, and that that might even mean storing some JavaScript and things on your own server that you can add new functions to it, but certainly all the, all the content should shouldn't be housed in, in, inside the app because yeah, you're gonna have to go through the app store, uh, Tango, <laughs> every time. Okay. To the pub. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>